All right, so I was on Twitter and Dave DeLong posted a really interesting question is that Swift UI is actually struggling to display and filter a list of 21,000 items, all right? And that's correct. Like if you are displaying 21,000 or so many items in a list control of a Swift view, it's going to take forever and your CPU is just gonna burn out. Now, the solution is actually pretty cool, which is from Paul Hudson. So I take zero credit for anything uh, and 100% credit goes to Paul Hudson. And look at what he's doing. What he is saying is that when you create a list and he's shuffling, so basically, uh, He's creating a new list again and again. And by simply putting the ID, this ID over here, you can do it blazingly fast, all right? So let me show you what exactly is going on. I have written the same exact code and 100% credit goes to Paul Hudson. I would say definitely uh, follow Paul Hudson. He does a lot of work for the community. So here is the exact same code or well, most of the code which uh, Paul wrote. And you can see that right now I have a list, a row of 5,000, 5,000 rows. And they are being displayed. And I have a button we simply call shuffle. And I have a list which, well, displays the rows. Now, let me go ahead and run this for you. Okay, so I'm running and I can swipe through it and yes, it works fine. What if I want to populate this list with 5,000 new records, which I can simply do by pressing the shuffle button. So shuffle button is going to shuffle those 5,000 items. Since it's a state, it's going to render the list again. And let's see what happens. You see that? It's nothing, not doing anything and my CPU is gonna go crazy right now. So it's not doing anything, it's just stuck. Okay, so let me stop that. Now the solution for that is by putting the ID field there we go, UUID. So what this is doing, according to Dave DeLong over here, I think I asked him the question. He's saying that since it's a unique ID every time for the list, Swift UI does think that, doesn't think that it's the same view and this reloads the entire content every time. So basically, if you remember the UI table view, reload data, so it's actually reloading the uh, data, all right? So let's do that to the list, not to over here to the second argument, we are already doing that, but to the list. And now let's go ahead and run this again. So now I'm gonna press on the shuffle and you can see it's super fast, blazing fast. And now you can see that it's working really. It's completely creating the re reloading the data, basically it's creating the list again and again. But remember this 100% credit goes to Dave DeLong and Paul Hudson for telling us this solution, which uh, will be very, very handy for you when you are building application that displays a lot of data, all right? So thank you, Paul, and thank you, Dave DeLong. If you want to learn more about creating Swift UI applications, then check out my best-selling course, Swift UI Declarative Interfaces for Any Apple Device. You can see I already have close to 2,000 400 students and 4.6 rating with bestseller. This is a more than 12 hour course, which will start from the very basics, building list and navigation. And then it's gonna dive into some advanced stuff like the MVVM design pattern, implementing the coffee ordering application. It's also going to cover property wrappers, forms, models, and including core data and finally covering the Swift UI for all devices, meaning that how you can create apps that will run on iOS, watchOS, and macOS. So this is an amazing course, and you can see that's why it's a bestseller. The best way to get this course is simply to check out the YouTube description. You will see a link in the description. Please use that link to get that course, because if you use that link, you will get the best deal, and I get to keep a little bit more of the revenue if you use my links. So thank you so much. And hey, you know what? Check out some other courses. I have a lot of courses for iOS development, even Flutter development, and Node.js for server-side JavaScript programming. So if you like any of those courses, all the links are over there in the YouTube description. So go ahead and use those. Thank you so much. And I really hope that you enjoy the course.